So I did want to do this job properly, so I have had to buy a few tools, and this is a crimping uh, set, and uh, oh, barely able to get that in shot, uh, but it's quite a large item, very heavyweight, but this should allow me to crimp my uh, 16 mil, 16 millimeters squared, sorry, crimp connectors pretty well, I think, and uh, I guess, well, there's only one way to find out. So I just need to work out how much of this insulation I need to take off, really. Um, well, here's a rough guide, perhaps a blade's width is about the right amount. Yeah, let's give that a go, a blade's width. That came off nice and cleanly, and uh, that fits in just lovely. So uh, now I just need to think about crimping it, and uh, whether I want some heat shrink on as well. Well, first things first, I'm going to crimp that and see what happens. Now you'll imagine this isn't going to be an easy thing to video, I need about seven hands I think, but see that's just fallen out so perhaps I'll try this way up pop the wire in carefully and bend that in well it's definitely closed that and that seems like a pretty good connection to me I might just do it again just to make doubly sure because I don't want to have any bad connections. Well I ran that through the crimper again and uh, I'm pretty pleased with that connection. Um, yeah, so do I need to heat shrink it? Do you know, I don't think I'm going to bother on the negative side. Um, but I might do on the positive with some red heat shrink and then I'll be able to tell won't I? So, with one lead made, before I make any huge mistakes, there's one connected at the back there, on the left-hand battery, and, uh, yeah, I think that'll work. It's perhaps a little bit longer than I anticipated, this cable, but I can certainly get my clamp meter in, so uh, I think I'll go ahead with all these bits of cable, and uh, I think these nuts and bolts might be okay as well. Might be a bit tight. I'll wait and see. And the other thing that's worth noting is I'm kind of doing the ends opposite. Um, so that I can interconnect one to the other quite happily. And they'll sit um, more comfortably. One on one side of the terminal, one on the other, if that makes sense. And now all my wires are crimped, and uh, I think I've done a reasonable job of that. And I've also found some heat shrink tubing, uh, and I reckon I can cut this into thirds, and that'll be plenty. Um, so I'm going to go in for a cup of tea now, because my hands are freezing, and I'll catch you in a bit. After a bit of lunch, the sun's come out, and uh, the frost is quickly melting, and uh, we've got what's that say 40 volts 1.2 amps uh, coming in and uh, therefore my batteries my old batteries are up to 14 volts well back in the shed now I've made my main cables here as well that are a bit longer to go up to my DC breaker and my negative bus bar and now I just need to heat shrink the uh, connectors and I've got my eye rudder gas powered soldering iron and if I just pop a bit of heat shrink on there and heat it up I think that will work quite nicely and just finish it off it's quite a nice job so with all my leads crimped up I think I've done 30 crimps and 30 heat shrinks uh, long leads for the main battery positive and negative those longer leads to loop the batteries together at the back or the front depending on where I decide that to be got a load of M5 nuts and screws from uh, the reclaimed batteries I've also got some 
wing nuts and some longer M5 zinc plated bolts and uh, I think we're ready to go. All I need to do is obviously disconnect the old batteries so uh, see you in a minute. Hmm, should have grabbed a torch first. So there they both are, removed from the shed. And these are sold as Hankook Deep Cycle Series XV24MF. Uh, 12 volt, 88 amp hour at the 20 hour rating. 570 cranking amps now. That to me says it's not a true deep cycle. But they have worked alright for a while. Like I said, need to clean these up. Um, and it's possible that one of these might end up in the caravan because our caravan flooded battery seems to have given up the ghost. Now I think the idea is to use this uh, slightly worn now um, bench top here which sits on top of this piece of metal, the metal shelf and uh, I'm going to use that as the base for my battery shelf and uh, I think it's time for a nice new workbench. So there we have it, my battery shelf and uh, I've got a nice new piece of wood uh, to build a new bench out of which is a bit lighter hopefully that might work better in the videos right all the batteries are in position and I need to get cracking really because the lights gonna go in an hour or so there are all my wires some screws and that sort of thing and I just need to be very conscious of the fact I've got a positive and a negative pretty close together here um, but I think I can deal with that so there's one half of the batteries wired up and uh, I think it's looking reasonably neat those longer cables there to loop around the back and down here at the front I've got my main negative point um, it is worth mentioning of course it's worth isolating these cables because uh, all it takes is one of them to touch one of them and we've got sparks on our hands. So I've got a bit nervous here about these batteries, the positive and the negative being so close. So I've found a bit of old wood. In fact, this was one of the early control panels here in the solar shed. And I'm just gonna pop that there just to isolate and ensure that those two terminals can't touch. And there we have it. Eight AGM 17 amp hour 12 volt batteries in parallel. My main positive is here, my main negative there. Um, I didn't have enough nuts and bolts from the uh, reclaimed AGMs so I've had to use some um, 30 mil M5 bolts there which are just about fitting and some wing nuts um, which wasn't ideal so perhaps one day I'll replace those but that board's in there in the center and there's a little cut out there at the back for those two wires that go through in fact three wires the main positive is going via that as well and uh, I don't think that's too bad. I think it's quite a neat job. Now all I need to do is attach that main positive and main negative to my DC breaker and negative bus bar. Okay, we're working via torch right now because the light's gone outside, but the main battery positive comes in there into the bottom of this midnight solar 30 amp breaker, loops over to this positive bus bar and then back into these 15 amp DC breakers, one for the charge controller and one for my inverter. The negative is also connected up, so it's time to see if we've got light. And uh, yes, we have. So that is the main switch on, that's the charge controller, and now the inverter. And it's nice to have light back on the shed but this never shows up very well. 12.9 on those batteries, 1.4 amps coming out of them at the moment. And uh, as you can see, I yet need to connect up the PV. 
that's it then eight AGM batteries in parallel 17 amp hours each for the solar shed hopefully these will work better in the winter and sag less well only time will tell just a bit of tidying up to do now oh and of course build another worktop Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you did give me a thumbs up, subscribe and comment down below. I'll see you next time, thanks for watching.